it's okay. Because <laughs> it's very different than when I uh, when I talked to you last. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, hello. <laughs> so uh, my name is Casey Keel. Uh, I am here doing the Seller Spotlight with Davis Cards and Games, uh, Melissa and Gretchen, and I've got Zach with me. I say hi, Zach. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Zach. Hi, Zach. Hi. So uh, we uh, both work with the affiliate outreach team, actually. Um, but we are sitting in for this seller spotlight because I actually met um, the, the, the folks from Davis Cards and Games back at a Gen Con a few years back. So we yes. had history and it was an excellent time that we had. Yay! And um, <laughs> we just uh, wanted the opportunity to chat with them and to share some information, allow them to share some information with all of you. So pretty perfect. Cool stuff. Yeah. Thank you for inviting us. We're happy to yeah. be here. I'm Melissa and this is Gretchen. Gretchen's my daughter. and. <laughs> Just get the names right. So, there you go. <laughs> awesome. So, I think we're just going to jump right into it if you guys are ready. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So, uh, what are the origins of Davis Cards and Games? Where did you come from? Well, um, I was looking for a, a new business venture, and Gretchen and my older daughter were both living in Davis, California, which is a, a college town. University of California Davis is here. And Gretchen was always going about 20 minutes away to Sacramento to play magic. And I'm like, why don't you play magic in Davis? Aren't there magic players? I went to the only store here in town at the time and uh, for a draft, and it was me and one other guy. <laughs> and, uh, every other night there was a tournament no one ever showed. So I just assumed that they're all too busy being in college to do um to do magic so i just drove 20 minutes to the store that was next to where i was going to college every day to just hang out and play magic with people wow. but what we found out was there were actually a lot of magic players in davis but they were playing at pizza parlors and bars and people's houses and <laughs> have somewhere to come together as a community the other store um, it was rather small and um, focuses on uh, more comic, comic books, books and, and video rentals, yeah. believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, we just thought there was an opportunity here. So um, it'll be four years, March 1st, that we opened. That's and nice. it was super welcoming to us. They yeah. left like notes. They asked yeah. like, if you need any help, you know, yeah. please let us know. One of them was a magic judge. He yeah. was super helpful. Yeah. And so the community really helped us create our store and, and, and grow. And, you know, we're not only do we have a great community, it's not just magic. I mean, we have a really strong card fight Vanguard community, um, Pokemon community and Yu-Gi-Oh community, um, board games, miniatures, um, the, we've been able to get some really great employees out of those customers. So we have 12 right. employees and, and they all were customers to begin with. So we feel very fortunate that, you know, not only do we have wonderful customers, but we have great employees as well. Wow, that's an awesome story. Yeah, uh, it's funny yeah. you mentioned uh, four years because in May will be Zach and I's four years with TCG players. So, oh, I think we need to go on a trip then to celebrate. Okay, yeah. we all go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, some yeah. So let's go to Cancun. Party. There we go. All right, sounds like a deal. All right. Uh, so that being said, you said four years that you've been around, but how long have you sold on TCG player? Since the beginning, um, we started through a third party um, seller, um, who I'm sure everyone is probably aware of who that is. <laughs> <laughs> he joined Pro. Well, we started just, you know, uh, not obviously not direct, but then in Gamma of 2017, 17. I guess that would have been yeah. the last time it was in Vegas. Um, that kind of changed our world. You know, we went to that. Um, with Chetty and yeah. he scanned the card and he's like, and then you add it to inventory. And I was sitting there like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So that, that really changed just from selling cards through a, another um, company's platform to joining Pro, being a direct seller. And then it just really took off from there. Yeah. Um, wow. But the thing I need to tell you is we've, from the very beginning, decided that our entire card single inventory was going to be online. And, and that was always our goal to have every card, whether it's a, a land, a common, uncommon, whatever, it's, it's scanned and it's an inventory. And we have over a million cards in inventory. 
and we keep them all um, in our I in here. <laughs> um, how we keep the birds? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But, um, There's an actual box. It holds two 3,200 count boxes, and we have um, a lot of drawers. <laughs> and, right. Um, and we everything is is alphabetized by set. Yeah. And and so that's you know I think a big key to it is is being very organized, and you can't you know you can't be organized enough. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I mean that's very similar to how TCG Player Direct looks, right? And we we yeah. talked about that at Gen Con. So yeah. Um, yeah. Glad to see you guys uh, keeping things nice and organized. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what drew you to the industry in general, like to trading card games and, and doing this I've, as your business? I've been playing Magic since high school. Um, just casually, though, I played mainly Commander. Uh, when I was in college, I started to do drafts. And I mean, I just liked it. I liked hanging out with people, but I always felt like this. a lot of the stores weren't very friendly to new players. It wasn't so to say the stores, like the players and some of the stores were very like nice to female players. I've had a few bad experiences at a few stores. Um, not going to name them, but I was kind of like, you know, wow, if I could run a store, I totally would. It'd be like very welcoming to anyone. So you know? I was looking for a new business venture. I had retired early from my um, my career, and I was looking for for something else to do. And I was in the medical field and. So I assumed I'd stay in the medical field. And then Gretchen had this idea, uh, let's open a, a game store. And, and since I knew there was a need for one in Davis, I was like, wow, yeah, let's, let's, we looked into it. We visited lots of stores. Um, my husband travels for work. I was traveling with him, visiting a lot of different stores. So we knew really what we didn't like in stores and we knew what we did like. And we, we just took that, everything there and we, our first location was only a thousand square feet. We we knew the night we opened we needed to move, and luckily we only had a year. <laughs> and so then we moved um, the follow. We opened March first. We moved that following February to our current location, and honestly, we want more space even <laughs> now. We, we're, we need it. Yeah, we're we're looking for the next you know the ne the next place to go to. So, um, you know that's you know it's a pretty simple story. Um, we wanted a place where everybody felt welcome. And we like to try new things. So we're not just a magic store. We, we, our, our employees have great ideas and they would say, hey, we should try doing this. And we're like, all right, let's try it. And it doesn't always work, but at least we're open to trying new things. And, and sometimes if it doesn't work, we revisit it about a year later because in a college town, it's a kind of a transient, you know, we, we have a lot of turnover um, here in Davis. So we know that if it didn't work one year, it might work the next year. So, that's right. awesome. That's a really good plan and able to keep you agile and uh, adapting yeah. to what new games or new ideas come around. That's super cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What would you consider the unique thing that sets your store apart, makes your store shine? Um, clean, clean. We're very clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard uh, when your mother's here every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> right I would right. also say the way that we just like, in general, everything is very organized. Um, not only our card inventory and the demo games that we have up above, um, even just out in general, our general merchandise stock, we, I go around every morning and I make sure there's no empty spaces, games aren't upside down, um, there's no dust anywhere, there's nothing that needs to be swept or clean, and um, also just being really welcoming, you know, yeah. I, I never judge a single person that comes in the door if they're like, I'm a new yeah. player, I go, cool, yeah. let me teach well, you. And we're very fortunate that our community is very welcoming too, and well. I think that's the part about this whole business that I really like. I, also that it's not, you know, it's not a cookie cutter. Every store is different. It takes on the personality of, of the owners and the employees and, mm -hmm. and, and that part of the, this whole game store industry. And people might not like our store and they can find another store. You know, it's not like we yeah. have the magic um, potion for how this, you know, this just is the way we want our store to be. And we like to welcome everybody to make everybody feel included and to try a lot of, you know, different things and not, yeah. you know, be stuck in a rut. So I think that's what sets us probably apart. 
it's it's funny you know the the cleanliness thing seems like a little thing but that's huge i've been in the stores i'm sure yep. Zach can yeah. attest. Yeah. Where it's not so much that <laughs> and exactly. uh, and it's really exactly. nice to come in somewhere clean you know i had a, a store of my own uh, at some point and keeping it clean is not an easy task so no good on you guys no. and, and no. that's really awesome all right so i think you already said this but how many employees do you guys currently have 12 12 Christian and i 12 employees so you awesome. have to have more staff when you are a direct seller i mean and i'm sure other you know uh other stores would agree um but it also <clears throat> a lot of staff to get all of our cards in inventory um so you have to really you know be willing to make that sacrifice to get your whole inventory um you know online and and then it makes the direct orders so much easier um, one thing I think Gretchen could talk a lot about, and this is probably, I'm sorry, I'm probably jumping your question, but okay. the, some of the, what, what made it hard to get everybody on the same page, and Gretchen could talk about this, is conditioning. Yeah. Um, you know, so not only, yeah, I want to be a direct seller, but, you know, there, you have to do a lot to be a direct seller, but once you are, it, and you're, it's super easy to do it, you know. I, I learned conditioning from what the uh, direct orders would kick back to me, and I'd read what they said that condition was. Sometimes I didn't agree with them. Um, <laughs> most of the time, it, that's where my, how I conditioned came from, just learning what they kicked back and said, no, this is moderate play. When you said it was light play, and I'd look and I'd be like, okay, I can see why. And we also had a really good person that helped us um, at the very beginning. I don't think she's in the customer service program, but there was somebody named Allie. Does Allie still work there? Yeah. She was really good about explaining, you know, why a card wasn't light in play. That. And and so then we had to take and train all our staff. And it is a different mindset because you guys know as players, you know, you're like, this is a light play card. It's not moderate play, but you know, we it's all- not, It's not bent. Therefore, it's light play. <laughs> right. It's been in my binder since I opened it in a sleeve, so therefore it's near mint. Yeah. But yeah. cards near mint coming out of the packs, and I, I sometimes some people say I'm a little bit harsh on my grading, but um, we have 100% positive feedback, and people have never complained about conditions. So I'd say that's a win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I've, uh, I've done the same thing. I was buy listing a card, and I was like, yeah, like this is fine i got it in a pre-release i took it out put it in a sleeve it was fine and then it got yeah. kicked back to me because it had a huge dent in the top of it and i was like oh uh that happens yeah <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i was gonna say zach and i both uh, worked in the receiving department for direct so we uh touched a lot of davis cards and games cards they were pretty a lot of <laughs> yeah. them coming through is awesome um, so I'm glad yeah. that the feedback that we gave, you know, was you guys were able yeah, to Yeah, and it's, it's, that. it's all a teachable moment. I mean, anybody who's doing the direct orders, when they do come back, it's <clears throat> interesting to, you know, go back and look. And, and I have um, the person, like, so employees pull the order, and then another employee double checks the order, and they make little notes um, so they know, like, this card, you know, ugh, you know, we're saying a moderate play, but maybe <laughs> for our standards, then we know when we get the, our extra inventory back and we get the sheet that says what's wrong with it, we use that as a teachable moment that yeah. you were right, you know, that card wasn't, you know. It wasn't yeah. much yeah. heavily played. And so, I'm, I always err on the side of it being worse condition. If I'm ever on the fence about a card, I just go, mm -hmm. no, I'm just going to import that as heavy play. It's better to be safe, sorry. Yeah, it's important to be flexible. It's not It's not a yeah. science. It's more of right. like an adaptive yeah. thing over time. Yeah. That's what right. they teach really heavily here at TCG Player mm -hmm. um, that we try to, you know, send that to you guys with those reports for the direct. Yeah, uh, it's very helpful. Yeah. 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 Another awesome. learning, oh. another learning curve for the employees definitely was teaching them fakes, but luckily I had a really <laughs> cool guy who helped me. Um, and I, he had me join a Facebook group and um, I didn't, I didn't bring it with me, but I have like a whole binder full of cards. People had tried to trade into the store that were mm -hmm. various levels of good fakes to <laughs> um, print it on a business card at Kinko's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, they definitely range. Uh, yeah, yeah so, no, they do. So can you guys tell us a little bit about your events? Like, what are they like? What kind of different events do you run? Um, um, we um, run two drafts a week. We have one on Monday. Oh, we have three now. We have, we have, oh, that's right. Three. We have three. We have one on Monday it's called our discount draft. It's $10. It's whatever the current standard set is. Um, the payout's a little bit lower. I'm looking at it right, right here like, you but, know. But, but we we try we draft three days a week. I mean Friday night magic is Friday night magic. Yeah. So 
but we, we do, like Gretchen said, we scale the payout back, you know, for these different drafts. And then we do a throwback draft on Thursdays. But, but all of our tournaments, whether it's Magic or Card Fight Vanguard or Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon, we're not a real competitive store. We try to spread the prizes out. So, uh, you know, we encourage a lot of new players. And so people who are looking for that real competitive store, we're not that They're store. They're the grinder players. Yeah, they, don't, they, don't, they don't come yeah, to us because yeah, they yeah. don't yeah. like us out. And we're just yeah. like, whatever. So that, that, that's, a, that's a decision we made pretty much from the get-go was – we wanted to make it so everybody felt, you know, not that everybody gets something, but we, it's definitely not top heavy, the payout. Yeah. But so other than magic and we do uh, pioneer, we do modern, we do standard, standard. and we do draft. Um, we have card fight Vanguard. We have Pokemon, we have Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, we have um, some miniatures um, and RPGs. Oh, role-playing games. Yeah, that's right. Important. We do, we do uh, D and D and we also spotlight indie uh, indie RPGs. So yeah, like nice. we have Hulu, yeah. um, we're going to have Vampire coming up soon and made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we don't focus just on the mainstream. Oh, and we have Buddy. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, and, 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 and Force. <laughs> yeah. Those are all uh, usually yeah. together. We have them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So that different employees, good. different employees are, are experts in different games. So, um, and I think that's why we're also, um, have a lot of people attend our events um you know so it's not everybody's a magic player you know um our store manager is really into card fight vanguard and 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 those games and why shorts and buddy yeah. fighting that so he really brings you know that community and and brings his insight for that so that's great that's, yeah uh so what were some initial challenges when you you know began selling on tcg player um, I would say definitely like conditioning, getting used to, you know, what TCG player considers conditions. And then um, when we switched over to pro, um, it was post uh, the Black uh, Black Friday incident of 2016. No, 2016. Mm -hmm. well, no, it was no, 2016. Yeah. yeah. That's right. um, and I'm there was a lot life. of, there was a lot of inventory descriptions. Um, <laughs> I basically had to go through about, there would probably like 20 sets. I had to go through and completely re-inventory. Mm -hmm. Um, just due to inventory descriptions and stuff and just not being right yeah. discrepancies and all that. Yeah. So um, that was a very big <laughs> initial challenge. I think right. one was overcoming the, the cards aren't in a box you can go through or they're not in a binder. And, and training your customers to use the kiosks which is then one of your best, you know, the best things I, that I like yeah. about TCG Player is are, are the kiosks. And we have two of them in our store. So training customers, so you don't want to like, you know, make them feel upset about it or anything, but just showing them, wow, you can look up our whole inventory here. You don't have to wait for one of us to, you know, right. on you. Yeah. And, and so that's been a, a big plus for us. Yeah. But some of the customers had a really hard time with not having any boxes or binders to go through. And some of them were really upset by that. And I just said, look, <laughs> Well, I import this card as light play. I can't have, you know, 20 to 30 people a day touching that card because then it could it right. yep. put the risk up for it being damaged. When right. I people go just don't, you know, they're adverse to change. That's yeah. Just yeah. And it also, about yeah, and it's also a clutter thing too. Um, when, so the cards aren't out, I feel there's less clutter and it's still a, you know, more open, you know, uh, clean, friendly. Absolutely all that yeah. uh, I hate to keep using those words but no it's important yeah, I like that it's all behind the counter um, so awesome. we can things you it's know safer and, for you too right so, yeah, those right. would be right if you're if you're handing out binders you know it's 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 safer yeah. when I was always yeah. handing out binders at my store I felt like I better watch this guy the whole time you know we, we trust our players yeah. But yeah having everything behind the counter is definitely uh, safer yeah, too. More, yeah. yeah more control mm -hmm. well that the the other things that we really, really like is the, the card scanning, the, the bulk scanner and the, the other scanner. That is like, that was the key to my heart it was, yeah. was Chetty scanning that card and adding yeah. it to quick list. And then you can just add quick list to the thing. I was like, I'm in love with this. I've used, I use all the scanners that TCG player provides. Um, the, this scan snap, the iZiggy webcam one. And, um, I, there was one summer we were really going after our bulk. I think I was importing about 600 cards a day. <laughs> I need to clarify. 
TCG player didn't give us the scanners. We no. purchased them, but right. it's the, 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 the software. The software, they, <laughs> right. yeah. Gretchen, you're going to start like a whole war or, you know, a firestorm of emails to why Megan. Didn't we get, why didn't we get a free scanner? Yeah. Well, I know. Well, the, the software provider. The software, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, that leads right into my next question, uh, which is just notable successes selling on TCG Player. Like, what were some milestones and stuff for Davis Cards and Games? Um, well, I mean, mass importing everything definitely was a big thing. And then all of a sudden, it was selling things that were very stagnant in the store. Um, our players don't like foils. <laughs> they don't like price foils. It's, it's too much. They go, no, it's too much money for me. Um, and the problem is, is they want to sell them. And then I wasn't selling them. So I wasn't buying as many high-end mm -hmm. cards and high-end foils because like no one was buying them. And then all of a sudden, when we started going direct and stuff, it was like, they were all disappearing. And I was like, yay. And, and also the, <laughs> Yeah, so she used to go to like GPs with binders and try to trade the cards we weren't moving in the <laughs> store for, so we don't have to do that anymore. No. So, <laughs> you know, we have, we have all these new customers that actually, you know, want our cards. And then in that, on the flip side of that is the buy list lets us get cards that our players want that we're having trouble getting. So right. uh, both of yeah. those work really well for us. That's awesome. Yeah, you don't have to do the, the, trade show hustle anymore yes <laughs> Walk no around. that was that was quite a it was it was a little bit challenging to do yeah. that so yeah. we don't even like doing it as players going around yeah. and having to trade and trade yeah. shows it's rough. Yeah. how did the uh the pioneer announcements do for you guys did a it, lot like, of people are, um, <laughs> a, well, a lot of people are really really interested into it um unfortunately our first pioneer night fell on halloween so it didn't fire Oof. but it right. it's Halloween. Yeah. Right. Um, so this Thursday, we're hoping for a bigger turnout, but we do yeah. have a lot of people interested in it. Um, yeah, and also, um, we noticed like once it was all announced, like we were selling a lot more um, cards that we weren't we moving got before. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of buy orders from TCG Player. Like it was like TCG Player purchase for like 120 cards, and it was like basically all yeah. of the same cards. I was Pioneer. like, oh. Cool. Yeah, a lot of specking and stuff being yeah. done. Yeah. And, and especially, I think it's a good a good time to be a seller and be selling a TCG player yes. because of the frequency of the bands or potential bands. I think yeah. that's actually yeah. quite a good time to be selling cards because yeah. people are specking constantly. So it's yes, it's pretty oh, exciting yeah. time. It is. It is very exciting. Yeah. Um, um, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, what have your guys' uh, experiences with ProLab been? We just officially signed up with Prolapse, but we have beta tested stuff before. Um, we beta tested the kiosks and that was amazing. That was such yeah. a great feature that came on and we're excited yeah. to, do to do more. Awesome, awesome. So. Megan actually just said she's got a question from Facebook. So she's gonna okay. poke in real quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, but uh, Darcy's online and thanks everybody for joining us on Facebook. Um, and Darcy's asking with every card inventory, do you keep price minimums for commons and such? Yes. yes. Um, so uh, we have a price yeah, minimum. Yeah, we have for minimum everything. for for definitely for everything. Um, um, so common, we're not a three penny seller. No. We don't sell anything um, so un, for, under fifteen cents. Yeah. So I mean, that's all our, of our commons and uncommons, foil and non foil, uh, the minimum pricing is fifteen cents, yeah. and then it just goes up from yeah. there. So and, and you know I think we we were a little bit lower, and then we met with. Eric, our wonderful um, customer service rep at uh, Gamma. And, and one of the things, I don't know, Eric or Scott, and Scott, I can't remember. One of, one of them yeah, somebody, us. yeah, was one of the suggestions they made was, you know, you can, you can raise those prices and you don't have to, I think it's getting past the mentality of the race to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, once you kind of get over that and let people sell them for three cents, that's fine. Um, I think that really helps your bottom line. And, and you got to figure out, you know, how many times are people touching this card in my store? And, and then you have to price it according to that. Right. So since all our cards were, you know, all our cards are in inventory and they've all been, you know, they got to be, they got to be scanned, they got to be put away, then they got to be pulled for an order. You got to take all that into consideration. Right. Uh, Megan said there's a follow up. Uh, yep. Uh, Darcy has a follow up. And it's uh, how much time do you spend grading a card, like a common, that would have a TCG low price under 10 cents? Grading a card? I, 
just I'm I'm pretty quick yeah, on grading cards now. Like I can I like will have a 3200 count box in front of me, and in about a day or two, I'll have it completely sorted. Um, grading bulk, I tend to just go if this looks bad, it's heavy play. I start at moderate play for that, yeah. and then I just go down in condition. We don't spend a lot of time putting a a cheap comment at you know deciding if it's light play to moderate play she yeah pretty much puts I them all start moderate, at moderate or, or, or heavy or, yeah. or, heavy or then, damage yeah. and i just start because it's just easier yeah it's just kind of you know maybe you're leaving a few pennies on the table but you got to figure what your time's worth and then yeah. you know that's just a decision that we made and again it might not be the best decision for everybody and yeah. and and that's the whole wonderful part about this business is what works for us may not work for another store or it might you know and it's it's good to hear all these other various opinions on way to do things and uh take take what works for you and don't worry about the rest you know yeah right i mean i think the conditioning thing is just the more you do it the better you get at yeah. it that's what we've always said here our, and yeah true. and our staff's that's super things. efficient i mean they're so well trained they do this all the time they buy cards they we sell cards i mean it's it's not like anybody loses any sleep over it. I'm probably the slowest grading cards out of everybody. So don't let me do it very often. No. <laughs> Holidays, when, when they make me get behind the cash register more. <laughs> All right, so on to the next one. We've got, what is your favorite feature of TCG Player or selling on TCG Player? I like, I like Quick List. <laughs> <laughs> And all the scanners are like my jam. There was, I wish we had a photo of it. There was one summer I was seriously in the like back corner of the shop set up on this table and it was me and just stacks of boxes and the scan snap. And I was importing 600 cards a day. And I was seriously, that was my entire summer was spent back um, inventorying um, bulk. And it, I did a lot of the older sets, especially the ones where they had like different arts for the same card. That was one of quick list was mm -hmm. really great for that because I would just type in the three to the each variant and then I just go through and count like okay I have five of you know counterspell A and then counterspell B and so it's just the more you do it the better you are the quicker you are the more efficient. Yeah. So yeah. I, I love quick list. I've done it, yes. I've worked with a couple of people that have done it and I'll just put my headphones in and just go boop 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 boop. boop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I, you know, I also really like that if I ever have issues, if I break the pricing tab, like Eric can probably attest that I love to break the tab. Um, <laughs> I can pretty much email him or call him and yeah. be like, hey, I broke the pricing tab again. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> hey, that means you're getting work done, right? That means you're yeah, yeah, exactly. the floor, getting as much done as you can. That's probably the, you know, the <laughs> thing that's the best about TCG Player is nobody has made us feel, you know, stupid or like, you know, yeah. everybody's so helpful and friendly and, you know, and not, no, no questions, a dumb question is what I'd yeah. like to say to, you know, to just especially new sellers out there, you know, always make sure you're, you escalate things if you have problems or you're just unsure. Like sometimes an order, like somebody might, you think they're trying to scam you or something, you're just not sure. I, you know, I always say escalate it and let TCG player, you know, let them take a look at it. So Better you know, to be I, safe than sorry. Yeah, right? it's yes, here for exactly. Right. Oh, especially yeah. when that whole issue with the high end cards and people saying they got fakes when they were yeah. sent real cards, that yeah. whole fiasco, it was like, I just escalated anytime anyone was mm -hmm. like, oh, yep. you know, this, this, you know, expensive card I got is fake. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm escalating that because yeah. I'm. <laughs> that. And, and the other, you know, the, the other real important thing that, that I feel like with selling online is you need to be. <clears throat> very prompt at responding to messages and, and right. very transparent, honest. I mean, we, like Gretchen said, we err on the side of caution, but I mean, I'm always responding to people and I'm not ever arguing with them. If I think it's an issue, I escalate it. Otherwise, I'm thank you for the email. You know, I, I try to be as, you know, we, we try to be as polite as we can. And if, if there's a problem with a card, I'm missing a card or whatever, or it's the wrong set. And especially if it's not an expensive card, I'll refund their order and just send them the card anyway. I mean, right. it, you just, it's so important to, to promote a positive uh, image and not that, you know, we're trying to take advantage of anybody. We just try to be as transparent as we can, both in the store and on TCG Player. Right. So. It's, it's the same as the cleanliness thing. It's a little thing that you do here and there, and, you know, and they go a long way. So, yeah. yeah. 
and if, and if we get a bad that. review, we we all we're always on that. We're like, hey, what could we? You know, I'm sorry to hear about that. Always respond. Don't take it personally. Um, and you guys have been great helping us with you know the problem ones that we have had. Yeah. I had a situation where I bought something not through direct and just through a seller and we had a miscommunication and basically like rather than just do the bare minimum, they refunded it, they shipped it, they apologized and they just took yeah. care of it in such a way that I was like, yeah, yeah I'm going to order from them again. Yeah. I think taking yeah. that step makes it so that like your customers across the world are going to, are more likely exactly. to buy from you again. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Right. Our we, oh, we have another question that came in. Uh, from Alex was wondering uh, how they organize their inventory, whether it's alphabetical or. You guys hear that? Uh, no, yeah, I can hear yeah. All of it. So it's uh, alphabetical by set. I'm so old. Like, sorry. Um, over, over that way is starting with like eighth edition and stuff, and then like here's Magic 20, and then Masters 25, and then within the set, it is organized alphabetically. So like it starts here at Masters 25 with you know accumulated knowledge and it's all it's so basically all alphabetical. yeah it's all alphabetical and let me that was probably one of the other when we first opened um problems because some of our staff at that time were like oh you gotta you gotta sort, sort it by, by color. color and I said I'm not a magic player I know the alphabet so what has to Bet. And I'm a magic player, and I still like if someone came up to me and named a card and asked me what color it was, I'd probably be like, I don't yeah. know, let me Google that. So. <laughs> yep. I, was, I know plenty you know, of people have done it that way where they try to yeah. list all the colors. It's like, nope. <laughs> I don't no, know. It's, how it's my story did it, but <laughs> alphabetical is the way. Yeah. It so is because then anyone can pull it. So, yeah. right. And that's basically how we, you know, mm -hmm. I do a lot of the stuff here at TCG Player. So you want to, you know, the more you can align with, that it makes your life just a lot easier with the yeah. thing and all the different aspects. Yeah. Okay. Everybody knows the alphabet. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I think it's funny because my binder at home is organized by color, but I'm not showing uh -huh. that to anyone. <laughs> well, that's for you. Yeah. <laughs> you do yeah. you. Your binder. Yeah, you yeah. do. Like, yeah. I don't mind if you know, but like, I just like I wouldn't be able to pull it if someone came up to me and. Just We're said, not gonna judge you, Zach. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Judgment-free zone here. I think at if anyone can judged, mine's completely random. Why? I'm a monster. <laughs> it's my binder, my binder, there. sorted by. Um, I have the fake cards in the front, followed nice. by. <laughs> I sign my sign cards yeah. that I got at GPS, followed by whatever else I have, just kind of randomly thrown in there. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. All righty. So the next one. What is your biggest wishes for something for TCG player or could provide to sellers? Like something. I have a wish, about? and Gretchen has a wish. Okay. Point of sale. Point of sale was the first one. Okay. Sale is hers. Okay. Mine is a wish list that customers could say, "I'm looking for this specific card, whether it's Magic or Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Card Fight Vanguard." And then when we import it, they get an email right away that says, "We have the card," because mm. what and time again is we get the card in we import it but one of the employees will say hey so-and-so is looking for that card but if that employee's not here we're going to sell it online and, yeah. and and you know i wish there was some type of a wish list so i mean i know there's a wish list where they can say i'm looking for this card but i want their wish list to be just for davis cards and games not yeah. for other stores you That'd know be pretty awesome i want that yeah. it took me four yeah. months to find a storm cauldron every <laughs> single day I'm, I'm refreshing refreshing going is it there no cool <laughs> oh uh, yeah that's no awesome. now i'll be looking for that card for you zach yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll that's, find one. uh melissa yours was pretty un pretty unique there that's pretty awesome but i i think everybody is uh echoing gretchen there with the uh point of sale so uh yeah. we're doing what we can <laughs> we hope so it's what i say every year at gamma i go point of sale point of sale please okay uh, i don't want to be like a broken record <laughs> right right what's that oh we got another one coming in from megan what was the question are all of your are all of your staff trained to grade conditions? oh are all of your staff trained to condition and grade cards all of my ones that um, buy and sell and yeah. pull magic, they are. So, I actually have like a little pack. I wish I would have brought it up with me, but I have, um, I pulled cards that are in different conditions 
and I go, you know, this is near mint. This no, we, we give them a play. test. We say grade these cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And I go through and I tell them, you know, why this is yeah. something. We but would... I think the important thing here is like, we do have a couple of employees that don't buy magic cards. Um, one's a Pokemon professor. Um, the other one plays all, a lot of other games. So he can buy a magic card and, and the conditioning is the same, whether it's a Pokemon card or a magic right. Condition is conditioned, but n not everybody can buy every kind of card. It, and it, yeah. that's just a protection for us because, you know, oh, hell, I'd probably, oh, I mean, darn, I'd probably buy, <laughs> hey, sorry. You're fine. Um, I'd probably buy a wrong, you know, card or whatever. You know, I could make a mistake because I'm not very knowledgeable about Pokemon, you know, right. so I don't let just anybody buy um, yeah. Pokemon. And, That's what and, I was going to ask is if you have different staff for different games or does everyone kind of handle everything? Well, I mean, magic's pretty easy that almost everybody can buy magic. I mean, if I can buy magic and I can understand magic, <laughs> 80. Um, so, you know, it, it's easy to, to teach people. It's very consistent and that. But but I, I don't buy, like I said, not everybody buys Pokemon. If, if you're not familiar with, you know, Pokemon, then you can't buy Pokemon. And but. everyone who, um, all my staff that buys magic, they have to pass my fake detection test um, because we have in the past. Okay, I bought a fake Liliana. <laughs> Let's just, <laughs> just get it. Everybody knows. <laughs> yes, yes. Knows. it was me. It was me. It was her. <laughs> hey, there um, were some. So that. Say, there's some good ones, Lily, right? Liliana's going around. Yeah, yeah it was actually. Yeah, well. It, guy here at TCG yeah. Player had like a stack of fake lilies that yep. we had found. Well, we found out that there was someone before we opened the store that had like a, yeah. a carton like this big full of lily on and they were just handing them out yeah. like candy. So yeah. the, the Davis Market got had a little bit of a flood of fake yeah. Lilianas for a bit, but <laughs> we test them on yeah. that. And I always say to my employees, and this is a motto I follow as well, if I'm never, if a card doesn't sit right with me and I'm like, I can't say it's fake, but I, it just doesn't look I just yeah. pass on it yeah. and I just, I can I'm, always pass on a card. Yeah. They, and they know that, you know, we buy a lot of cards, but yeah. Like you gotta be, just, be willing to, you know, if you're yep. unsure about it, yeah, not, not, yeah. not yeah. you know, necessarily have to buy every single I'd, ra I'd rather have turned down a real card mm -hmm. than buy a fake card. Yep. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And we, we do the exact same thing. We call them fireside chats in yeah. our uh, direct, the people who work in direct and we just sit together, we, you know, pass cards around and talk about what we think about them. We'll usually bring in yeah. the problem childs, the ones that are very <laughs> hard to tell or what very hard to, you know, put, put yeah. a condition on. Um, and my favorite is the Tundra. We call it Tundra Gate. I mean, it was the time we had a Tundra <laughs> that yeah. the whole, everybody in direct, it was like 50, 50, 50, 50. Wow. Had, whether it was real They're or doing, fake, we, was, it was it? It was real. Oh, wow. Ah, Just wow. so you know, th you know, revised dual lands can sometimes Be look real. so minty <laughs> that you're <laughs> like, I can't believe this is this nice. Yeah. Um, no one has a card and, and, this nice. Yeah, there's Just no way a card this old looks that good. And another, another thing that, and this is a little bit off topic, but um, as far as um, buying and selling cards, the community here in this greater Sacramento area is really good about, hey, somebody's you know, deck was stolen out of their car and this is what, so, so we're all on, you know, a Facebook group and we're, we always watch out for each other that way. And, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, it is you know, really cool. nobody wants to buy stolen cards. Nobody, yeah. everybody wants to see the cards, you know, get back, um, rightful owner. So, um, you know, if anything does seem weird or, you know, not right to, you know, we, we let our staff know that this deck was stolen or, you know, this, a binder with these kind of sleeves. So, I think that's a pretty neat, you don't find a lot of industries where the competitors are willing to help each other out that way. Right. I was yeah. going to mention this earlier when you were talking about it's not a race to the bottom anymore, but I think it's really important to mention, and it's really in line with what Zach and I do, is that, you know, if we all grow together, then we all grow together. Yeah. Yes. So, like, yes. as a trading art game community, so, you know, that sort of thing where we're scratching each other's back or looking yeah. at, you know, watching each other's back. It's just a really awesome thing yeah. to hear that you guys do. I, I wish you were my store. Yep. <laughs> I wish I could <laughs> um, and we had one store when we first opened, we were running legacy because we had this one person in our community who was, you know, really good with the older sets mm -hmm. and, and helped us out a lot and taught us the, the person Gretchen was talking about that taught yeah. us about fakes. 
So we used to run Legacy and then another store in Sacramento, well, we didn't want to run Legacy the same Sunday they were. So it was kind of neat that we, you know, we made our schedules so the players didn't have to choose. And the players got more because they got to come to their store, you know, on one day and our store on another day. And, and you know, it's, this, that kind of stuff, I think, also helps the community, um, you know, be the best it can be for all the players. I mean, we want everybody to play as much as they want to. And we don't want to compete with each other that way. Yeah. I mean, right. when it's pre-release, it's pre-release. Pre Everybody's and when happy. It's <laughs> yeah. Happening. Yeah. Wild West at that point. Yeah. Now, yeah. So we got two questions left and we're approaching oh. uh, the end. Oh, time sorry. Here. No, you're good. You're great. Um, the one, I think you've answered quite a bit and more way outside of our expectations, which is what kind of advice could you give to new sellers? You've been yeah. doing that the whole time. So <laughs> yeah. it's pretty awesome. If you're okay skipping that one onto the last yeah. one, we can do that because yeah. you've been awesome about that. Well, I mean, I, again, don't hesitate to ask TCG player. And that's the only way we got to where we are today, <laughs> by asking for help and asking questions yeah. and, and not being afraid to escalate things. So. Well, we appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, what special things are you doing to leverage the Black Friday shoppers? Uh, let's see. We're not going to have a system crash like 2006. <laughs> we're going to we're going to skip doing that this year. <laughs> we're going to skip having it's a crash. Be great. System. Yeah. Um, we're going to have discount. You know, sales yeah. on board games, board games and RPG and stock, stuff. stocking yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't expect you to say exactly what you're doing <laughs> yeah because i gotta keep it a secret yeah, so i still course, sell course, stuff up until then i, yeah, I just yeah. we, i guess we wanted I, to know if you were going to do stuff and yeah we'll, and do, what we'll do, typically do stuff do, sort of a thing yeah we usually do sales we highlight things that make great stocking stuffers are like great kind of generic um gifts for people like you know if you have if you're buying a christmas gift for an rpg player dice sets. I have my metal dice sets by Die Hard and I just tell them, look, get them a really nice dice yeah. set. They'll appreciate that. Awesome. The other yeah. thing I want to do this year, and I can't remember who I need to give credit to this, but, you know, thank God for the Facebook store owner groups because I learned so much in the three of them, four of them that I belong to, but somebody had a, a wish list. Um, so pe employees, or I mean, customers could come and fill out a wish list and then their family could come and know what to buy them. Oh, of that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I want to do that this year. I need to get that kind of going soon. But yeah. um, so that that's, you know, one thing that we wanted to, to do. And then we also give extra points on our customer reward program, usually on the Black like Friday double, weekend. Like double points. Yeah. You want to really quickly... Uh, just recap what that is. I, I don't know what you mean by customer reward program. I still didn't have one like that. Okay, well, um, different. Uh, we use a platform called Belly. I'm not recommending it or not recommending it as we <laughs> use. So they have a card and every time they make a purchase, they scan their card uh, five dollars, and they and they get, you know, a, a certain amount of points. And okay. then they can those points for things from magic to board games to miniatures to a candy okay. bar. You know? and That's awesome. Oh. tournament entries so yeah. yeah oh that's actually yeah. that's awesome usually that one's off limits with yeah. the like store yeah. credit and no. stuff sometimes there try you to go. try so, to break those boundaries you know change yeah. those rules yeah. up yeah change the game i can yeah. count on davis and cards and game for doing that change the game at gen con when i was there <laughs> hey was that's not my fault <laughs> i'm not allowed not, to go to gen nope, con and talk nope, to you guys not, anymore <laughs> <laughs> not blaming you in the slightest <laughs> <laughs> not blaming you in the slightest. Uh, it was a, it was a blast. Uh, but we do would love to have you guys out here at Syracuse and uh, have you. Visit. We we are going to. I say that every year, but we are really going to this year. I want to come when there's a lot of snow on the ground oh and boy. there's a driving wind, like a yeah. old negative. Is, and, is there a um, time of year when that happens? It's just. Uh, I would say most of the time. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Cool. great. I want to come when there's like a blizzard. All right. That, that yeah. sounds more okay. cool. Maybe fly right before it and fly okay. yeah. it leaves. All right. so you're safe. I'm from Arizona. Definitely. And I thought snow was a cool idea and then I experienced <laughs> snow and no. No, uh, well, I don't I don't miss it. Yeah. We, Nebraska. Yeah. Jeez, oh yeah. yeah. Go visit. Yeah. It's fun to go visit the snow. Yeah. 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 Not live it's fun it. to see pictures of snow. Like it's cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. That's great. Or snow covered <laughs> mountains on a magic. Uh, yeah. Like that's those. The, that's the yeah. 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 The snow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will come out. I promise. Keith. Yeah, that would be awesome. We would love to host you. Uh, and want to check with Megan real quick before we sign off on any other outstanding questions you want to field. From Darcy, one more. How many 
staff members respond to messages to buyers? Oh, on the platform? Yep. How many of your employees respond to messages uh, on the platform? Um, usually, let's see, there's four of us that do. Okay. Yeah. That's me, including not YouTube. No. So me and three other employees are pretty much the only ones that do that. Okay. Very yeah. cool. But you train them. You want to keep, you know, a consistent. Yeah. I'm a Monday through Friday person most of the time. So, um, you know, I try to do them during the week. So. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank this you. was such a blast. Yay. Awesome. I can't wait for uh, Megan to ask us maybe back to do it again. That'd be great. Right? Yeah. Um, and we can't you guys should come to Gamma. Business. Maybe we'll see you at Gamma. Hey, yeah. Maybe we will. We were just asking about that. Ask actually. Yeah. So All right. At least one of us. Bye, you guys. Fight to the death. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank thanks you. So much. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.